hyperspace. No, not back on hyperspace. This kind. The hyperspace of higher dimensions. Yeah, okay. It's a concept relating to higher dimensions. Hyperspace is not exactly a good definition of it. It's just a relation. But I like the word, so I'm going to keep using it. But what is hyperspace? What is a higher dimension? How can we visualize it? You can't visualize it. There ain't even a reason why I should care about what it is. I agree. You cannot visualize, but that does not mean we can't explore how we can view through a medium that we can visualize. And the care, well care about it being an interesting topic? Let us start simple. What is a hyperspace? Well, both you and I live in a world with three spatial and one temporal dimension for a total of four dimensions. Don't worry about the temporal dimension. We're not going to be looking at it. We're only going to be looking at the dimensions we can move around in, the spatial dimensions. We experience this as, in no particular order, forwards, backwards, left, right, up, down. So, to us, hyperspace is anything with a higher dimension count, or particularly, a higher spatial dimension count. But what does this mean? I want to give a special thanks to Ecantdo for agreeing to be a participant in this demonstration. As we can see here, our two-dimensional being can move in the four cardinal directions. Up, down, left, and right. It can also spin around. To our friend here, the shapes in this world are, well, uh, two-dimensional but he would have to explore the perimeter of the entire shape to figure out what that shape is. SQUARE! Let's insert a hypersquare into E Can't Do's two-dimensional world. For us, it's just a cube, and for E Can't Do, it's a square. Remember, a hypershape is just a shape that exceeds the dimension count. And in this instance, we're in two dimensions. So a hypershape is anything that is three or more dimensions. For E Can't Do, he will have no idea that there is anything more than just a square. Alright, let's pass through another shape, but I'm not going to tell you what shape is passing through. See if we can instruct what shape it is based on the cross section. Alright, he can't do. What do you think it was? A hypercircle! but I would have a really hard time getting it if I was really two-dimensional. So for a three-dimensional object, we can pass them through the second dimensional plane and get a two-dimensional shape. All right, let's go up a dimension. Let's pass a four-dimensional object through the third dimensional plane. Remember, this to us is going to be looking like what E can't do with seeing, just a cross section of the overall shape it is going to be extremely difficult for us to visualize what the overall shape will be. Hmm, what should we pass through? Ow. Now that wasn't super interesting, was it? Ah, oh, it's just a hypercube, just without a rotation. Let's try something else and hope it gives a bit more of an interesting result. Now that was a bit more interesting. That was a hypersphere. This sphere is defined by four dimensions and a radius of 40. Yes, I know that it does not always have a radius of 40, but that is what you get when you can only show so much of a shape at a time. This is really easy to demonstrate using a circle uh, in a two dimensions and passing it through a single dimension. Now if I add the circle to the visual, I will end up being the length of the line. It's just the quarter of the circle. So what we saw from the four dimensional sphere was whatever the equivalent chord was. So what can we affirm about this? Well, what happened with our 3D to 2D example? Well, in two dimensions with the sphere passing through, you can't do is seeing a circle. So it's just a cross section of the overall shape. So what we're looking at in this render is a sequence of three dimensional cross sections of the overall four dimensional shape. I mean, I can't prove that it's a four dimensional shape because I can't really show you what the overall shape looks like at least not before compressing it into three dimensions first. Now let us have a look at some more interesting higher dimensional things. Just keep the idea that we are looking at cross sections of the higher dimensional shape. This fascinating shape is a hypertorus. Well, sort of. 
As this is the first shape beyond a simple sphere, I went a bit more simple for the math of the shape. This torus stems from this Reddit post, and based on the description of, the torus sphere can be thought as a hypersphere with a hypertube, or the high parabola, cut out all the way through the hypersphere. Although, it's not looking quite right. Let's see if we can do something about that. So this is looking more like a hyper napkin ring. I also want to try a different way to render this, as it's not working as well as I had hoped. One modification of ISO render slater, and we're back! This time, it is a proper hyper torus with a major and minor radius. The major radius being the distance to the center of the outer ring, and the minor radius being the radius of the tube. Well, now that's over with. Here are a few more shapes I got with playing around with the 40 hip parabola. There's also this fun one when playing around with the coordinate values for the torus. There were more shapes that I wanted to look at, but shapes that are not constructed by finding the distance to some point are a lot harder to generate. Seeing that I'm already some 250 hours of work into this project, and it's almost been a year since my last upload, I might revisit this at some point with more shapes. I'm also going to make a part 2 to this video that looks into the details of development. There's also going to be a slightly more technical exploration of this topic.